वेलकम टू माय कोर्स इंडस्ट्रियल बायोटेक्नोलॉजी इन द लास्ट क्लास आई डिस्कस द एयर स्टेलाइजेशन एंड आई टोल्ड यू दैट बायोकेमिकल इंडस्ट्री दैट द स्टेबिलिटी इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर बिकॉज यू वी सेल हैव टू अलाउ द ग्रो ऑफ ए डिजायर ऑर्गेनिज्म इन द रिएक्टर सो वी शुड नॉट अलाउ एनी फॉरिन ऑर्गेनिज्म to enter into the process and for that we find two important uh, the source of contamination one is the air because most of the uh, fermentation is carried out under aerobic conditions and media that is required for the growth of the microorganism so in the last class i try to share that air sterilization and i main part major main <laughs> Uh, objective was to remove the contaminants that present in the air now when we <coughs> uh, when we design any kind of air sterilization process uh, that uh, we always assume that uh, that uh, a basis basis is that the out of how, how much of contaminants how what is the how much organism you are going to remove as for example whether you are removing 1 in 1000 1 in 10000 1 in uh, 100000 like this so you have to the more your process is stringent your sterility is your requirement is more your your you you you, you take more precautionary measures and another issue i told you that i again the type of organism you remove again it depends on the type of fermentation you were Uh, you are carrying out i i have given the example of cytic acid fermentation process we use the cane molasses as a raw material for cytic acid production now cane molasses also a very good raw materials for uh, yeast fermentation process now if you look at the doubling time of yeast is much less as compared to doubling time of that uh, aspergillus niger which produces citric acid so naturally uh, contamination of uh, yeast is uh, more much more uh, concerned as per the cytic acid fermentation so and and usually the air in the air filter we use the uh, physical separation technique we use some kind of um, depth filter to remove the contaminants now the it has been chosen that uh, that uh, uh, that a glass wool fiber is considered the base for the removal of the contaminants present in the air the reason is that uh, here drag coefficient is quite low and not only that uh, the you can uh, regenerate the uh, glass wool fiber again and again because when after some time uh, when you use glass wool fiber as a filter after some time your filter bed will be totally saturated with the contaminants so in that case what you have to do you have to remove the contaminants now now question comes that uh, the size of the air filter again depends on the quantity of air that you are going to sterilize suppose in case i told you that uh, the size of the inoculum vessel is usually 5 to 10% of the production fermenter so naturally when we prepared the media we prepared the uh, we designed the air filter for the uh, for the inoculum vessel our size of the filter requirement will be very less but when you go for production fermenter it will be very high because size will be 10 times higher than that of the uh, inoculum vessel so now question comes that 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 i can show you the very simple design of that air filter that is we have in practice in the industry that is like this we have we have this is the air filter we can have and here we should have some kind of stainless steel mesh just to protect the uh, fiber now you pass your air like this and you, this is air in and this is air out so this is how we can do that now uh, now uh, this is the for inoculum vessel it is fine because this kind of small system we can use now when you go for the production fermenter so uh, the size will be 10 times higher than that because the capacity of the production fermenter is more now question comes that 
if you increase the surface area like this 10 times it is very difficult to occupy a lot of space and it is very difficult to design uh, we we be difficult to control the uh, the process so what we have to do we shall have to make the process the air filter very compact so question comes how we can make this air filter compact so now we, if we have some cubical things that you know like this air filter so we can have this like this inside so if you pass air air inside and air can comes out like this in different direction you can form the annular space you can you can keep hold the assembly inside the filter and you can increase the surface area so uh, so like this you can take uh, you, you you can take the air out from the here the annular space you can you can uh, we can make the system very compact in case, uh, in case you require the higher surface area so this uh, i forgot to mention in the last class now today uh, i want to discuss about the medium sterilization and in medium sterilization the purpose is same that we we shall have to remove the contaminants that present in the uh, in the water in the media and this is the destruction or removal of viable organism with an object uh, or from a particular environment now various method of uh, air sterilization is there one is uh, the heat is the heat is the best media for media uh, sterilization because when you talk about media is the liquid media and heat is transferred by for three different mechanism one is conduction and this is convection and radiation so this is all three process will be very active in case of medium sterilization uh, but we have two methods we have dry heat we have moist heat we have seen moist is is much effective as compared to dry heat i said so you later than radiation method than filtration method chemical methods we use for um, like alcohol oxidizing as in salt surface active as and this is this is uh, this uh, this is the chemical method is rarely used for medium sterilization mostly we use uh, the either heat or the filtration method now again when we use the filtration method i told you that that uh, that heat as you know heat uh, your media comprises of lot of uh, uh, nutritional uh, component like vitamins and amino acids so these vitamins and amino acid they are very sensitive to temperature so as we increase the temperature the quality of this media will be lost so to uh, in some fermentation process we required uh, we have we shall have to ma maintain the quality quality of the uh, that media so in that case we shall have to the vitamin and other things we can uh, we can filter through the filter paper uh, just to sterilization purpose and as we, as i told you when you when you filter we use a membrane and membrane has some pore size and if you if you suppose i want to remove bacteria the smallest and size of bacteria varies from 0.5 to 2 microns so uh, 2 microns so so uh, suppose now if i keep the pore size less than 0.5 micron then we can your if you, when you pass your liquid then all the bacteria will be retained here and comes in. now only the problem with that i told you that there will be tremendous pressure drop across the membrane and the life of the membrane also quite less so it is very expensive as compared to heat now when we consider heat as a sterilizing media the question comes how heat is effective for uh, sterilizing the uh, media because because we know that uh, organism uh, in the when you heat the organism that it contains lot of protein molecule and protein had uh, high temperature it undergo the uh, denaturation as the denaturation of the enzymes uh, takes place inside the organism that the biochemical activity of the organism will be stopped and your organism will be killed now we have 
thermal heat method, we have dry heat, it employs the higher temperature in the range of 160 to 180 degrees centigrade and required exposure to up to 2 hours depending upon the temperature employed. So, this is very, uh, the, 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 if you compare with the moisture heat, the moisture heat is involved the use of steam in the range of 121 to 140 degrees centigrade. Steam under pressure is used to generate high temperature needed for the sterilization. Now, this moisture is, is much effective than dry heat, that is why dry heat we require lot of high temperature as compared to moist heat. Now, the, that uh, no sterilization by radiation uh, can be achieved by the electromagnetic radiation such as the electron beam, x-ray, gamma, gamma rays or e-radiation of subatomic particles. Electromagnetic or particulate radiation can be uh, energetic enough to ionize the atom or molecule or less energetic. So, but non-ionic uh, radiation like UV rays radiation is useful to sterilize the surface some transparent object. Uh, UV radiation is routinely used to sterilize the interior of the biological safety cabinet because that is we know in the operation theater also we use the UV rays for uh, surface sterilization purpose because uh, we in, in the biochemical industry also we have you know uh, we have lamella flow where we do the we prepared our culture that inside the chamber we usually sterilize with the help of UV rays. Now, <coughs> the radiation method is the ionizing radiation sterilization gamma radiation is very penetrating and is commonly used for sterilization of disposable medical equipment such as syringe, needles, uh, food it is omitted by the radioisotopes. Now, second is the filtration methods. Filtration uh, process does not destroy, but remove the microorganism. That is why I told you that in case of heat sensitive material, uh, we use that, but this is very costly process. Um, and you know, when you talk about the biochemical industry, we have two type of products. One is called high value products and another is the low value products. High value products means per unit cost of the uh, product is very high. Share because since the per unit cost of the product is very high there, we can think for this kind of technique where high cost involvement is there. But in case of low value product, we cannot make a low, value, low, low value and high volume products, we cannot think for this process will be no good. So, it is used both for the clarification and sterilization of liquid and gases as it is capable of preventing the passage of both viable and non-viable particles. Sterilized solution that may be damaged or denatured by high temperatures and the chemical agents. The major mechanisms of filtration are sieving, adsorption, trapping within the matrix of the filter material. The pore size of the filtering uh, for filtering bacteria, yeast and fungi is in the range of 0.22 to 0.45 microns. So, this is the size, the more we go to the lower size of the uh, pore, the pressure drop across the membrane will be high. Now, uh, now in case of heat sterilization, which is in practice in the industry, we have thermal death time. It is a the shortest time required to kill all the microorganisms in a sample at a specific temperature and not definite condi condition. Now, here I want to point out that whenever we design any kind of sterilization process, medium sterilization process for the industry, we never go for the 100 percent sterilization. We always assume 1 out of 1 million, 1 out of 10 million, 1 out of 10,000 like this because as per the, the whatever as per requirement of the process. Now, decimal reduction time that is also is a kind of term we related to the medium sterilization is the time required to 90 to kill 90 percent of the microorganisms in a sample as a specific temperature. So, uh, the time required to kill the 90 percent or that means uh, the if, if, uh, if 10 organisms is there the, the it will be becoming one organism. So, this is uh, 
the kinetics of thermal death ray death of the microorganism can be expressed like this dn minus dn by dt equal to kd into n where kd is the thermal death rate constant and n is the number of viable organism presence now uh, this is like this i shall show you this uh, you see that if you if you if you look the uh, the in ln in ln t, uh, this is the plot of ln nt nt means to that uh, as the number of viable organism present at time t an initial number of organism that is keep on decreasing the sharp plot with respect to time this is the this that means is follow the first order kinetics so <coughs> this is like this so so it is like this the, so we can we can we can write minus dn by dt equal to kd in twin now we we can we what we can do that uh, uh, so we can write uh, minus dn by n equal to kd into dt now this is equal to minus dn dn sorry this is dln n minus equal to kd into dt now if you plot if you if you integrate n0 to n whatever you have or n t whatever you have this is 0 to t then what will be this minus ln n t by n 0 am I right this is equal to k into t now if you if take this minus this way this will be minus k t in that case n t I can write n 0 into e to the power minus k t so the number of organism present at any time t we can easily and this is k is nothing but k d so this is the k d k d is the thermal death rate constant the unit of this since it is follow the first order kinetics so it it is the unit is time inverse this k d unit is time inverse now this k d we can determine experimentally because um, uh, there is a some technique because you have to take in small capillary if you have hot and cold bath and uh, you take the culture initially if you take the instantaneously if you cool and hot this uh, uh, material then what will happen you can find out that uh, that how much viable cells is present uh, by exposing a particular temperature for higher, higher for uh, for a particular time so you can easily calculate the kd value now how to calculate the decimal reduction time decimal reduction time means 90 percent removal of the initial microorganisms so, so n by n0 will be 1 by 10 and if you write it so we will be coming this d equal to 0 0.2.303 by kd that means your decimal reduction time is inversely proportional with thermal death rate constant this is k d inversely proportional so uh, as the time increases the k d value will increase because i can show you here that uh, here you can see this is like this as the as the time increases that this uh, this is will be becoming more steeper and uh, it's like this now if you plot this uh, uh, log log graph paper then we have this kind of plot it will be, it, it, this is in case of uh, 60 degree centigrade and 54 degree centigrade if more increase the temperature it will be more steeper so kd value will increase us so uh, so what i want to mean that as you increase the temperature kd value will increase to a great extent and your uh, your d value will decrease now uh, <coughs> so this kinetic description uh, makes two prediction which contradict with each other at different time is required to achieve the sterile condition and after certain time there will be less than one viable cells remaining 
so you know that uh, this is uh, thus a, a value of nt less than 1 microorganism remaining is considered in terms of probability of an organism surviving a treatment so i told you that uh, that when you when you design any kind of sterilization process always we assume 1 in 1000 or 1 in 10000 1 in 100000 what uh, sterility factor uh, you are going to have in your system now here there is an interesting table that shows the how temperature affect the value of KD. This is the KD value. This is KD is thermal death rate constant. As you know that as you increase the temperature 100, 110, 120, 130, 140 and 150, the KD value drastically changes. This unit is minute inverse. The holding time means uh, this is the time required for sterilization. I shall explain the what is called when I shall discuss the continuous sterilization process. Now, uh, as you as you see, when you have uh, we have the 100 degree centigrade, we may hit the media 100 degree centigrade, then K by KD value is 0 0.02. You have to sterilization time is 1730 1, minutes. But 110 degree centigrade, the K value KD value is 0 0.21. Then it's reduced to 164 minutes. 120 degree centigrade. KD value is for 2 that uh, your uh, the sterilization time is reduced to 17 minutes. Now, 130 degree centigrade is it is 17.5 and this is uh, the 2 minutes is the sterilization time. 140 degree centigrade is a 136 is a KD value and holding time is 0.25. Now, in the industry that uh, you know that in the in the laboratory, we use the, our sterilization temperature is 121 degree centigrade for 15 minutes. This is the, the sterilization. Sterilization temperature and time. This is the time requirement is this. So, <coughs> so now in the industry that uh, uh, we use actually 140 degree centigrade because uh, now uh, and, and usually that you see that your sterilization time is reduced to 0.25 minutes. The holding time is 0.25 minutes. Now question comes why we go for uh, this uh, high temperature sterilization. So in the industry we usually follow the techniques what you call high temperature short time techniques. Now, why we follow the high temperature short time techniques? The reason is that 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 if you if you look at the EA value, EA value means activation energy value of the microorganisms are 250 to 290 kilojoules per mole, and uh, the activation energy for vitamins and amino acid is typically 84 to 92 kilojoules per mole. That is that means if you heat the media at a low temperature it is more effective for destroy the vitamins and amino acids that is why you know that in the in the household purpose when we purchase some kind of medicinal tonic it is always prescribed that you should keep it at low temperature so that your those uh, tonic mostly comprises of some vitamins and amino acids and they are very sensitive to temperature so even at low temperature there the denaturation may take place but but if you look at uh, the higher temperature that you have EA value is the, we can have higher higher that the activation energy requirement high. So this means the small increase in temperature has a relatively greater effect on the cell death than the nutritional destruction. This fact becomes the basis for the use of high temperature short time technique in the industry. This is why that industry we follow the high temperature short time technique for the sterilization of the media. Now, <coughs> so we have two type of sterilization in the industry that is we have batch sterilization, batch sterilization, sterilizing the entire volume of the media at once using the heating and holding the uh, cooling methods. So, you can you can have this, this is the media and you can pass your stream like this 
or you can you can electrically heat it or you can have jacketed whatever you can so you can you can do the sterilization like that this is called the batch sterilization and continuous sterilization means sterilizing only a fraction of the volume at a time by using the temperature as the internal heat exchanger now basic difference between the batch sterilization and continuous sterilization in case of batch sterilization the entire volume of the media at once the heating holding and cooling so what uh, what does it mean what does it mean mean suppose the suppose in the and this is the fermenter and you have media now you want to sterilize this media so this is the starter we, we have and we we want to sterilize the media so first you have to heat it so you require some time to suppose this is our ambient temperature is about for 35 degrees centigrade so you have to increase the temperature and then it it attains 121 degrees centigrade then you have to hold it for 15 minutes that is like this then you have to cool it am i right this is cool to the again 35 degree or 40 degree centigrade whatever you have so this is so this is called heating then it, this is holding you are holding the temperature and this is called cooling now we have seen that uh, we have seen that uh, different organism has uh, different uh, uh, depends uh, the death of the organism depends on the temperature we have seen just now that uh, as you increase the temperature kd value changes drastically so we know that means at different temperature you have different kd value so there will be death of the organism during heating there is the death of the organism during holding the temperature there is a, uh, the death of uh, organism during the cooling so you know that so what the total sterility is a combination of all, all the three things both have uh, heating holding and cooling that that is the total effect we have that is why uh, if you look at that uh, that you know that uh, the basic difference between the continuous sterilization and the batch sterilization in the continuous medium sterilization is based on the concept of high temperature short time this take the advantage of the fact that an increase in temperature has a relatively greater effect on the thermal destruction of the cells than on nutrients the steam consumption of continuous sterilization is perhaps 20 to 25% of the requirement for a batch cycle so this is a very crucial factor because because of whatever steam we required for sterilizing the media in a batch system that is very high as compared to that of continuous sterilization process the total time required to sterilize the temperature in case of continuous sterilization is 2 uh, to 3 hours uh, compared to 5 to 6 hours case of batch sterilization process so time requirement time is a very crucial factor as you know in the industry so this is very effective that you know that uh, that uh, the continuous sterilization process is very effective one point i i i uh, i forgot to mention that when i showed you the effect of temperature on the killing of microorganism even if you increase the temperature from 140 to 100 for 50 degrees centigrade your sterilization time again further reduce now question may be asked why you are not going for very high temperature now you might be aware in the industry we increase the temperature by increasing the steam pressure now if you have very high temperature the equipment design is a problem because some kind of stringent we have with respect to equipment design that is why we in the industry if we feel 140 degree centigrade is most suitable for the sterilization of the media so i want to stop here now and next class i am going to discuss about the continuous sterilization process thank you